Hello, my name is Sean Atkinson. I'm an assistant professor of music theory at the TCU School of Music, and I'm really excited to be doing the special pedagogy session at this year's TSMT meeting. The session itself will be on February 26 at 1.30 p.m. Uh, the session is all about using flipped classroom instruction and talking about specific strategies for that style of teaching in a music theory classroom. So in that spirit, I thought I'd go ahead and flip the session itself, using this video to talk about a lot of the background and conceptual issues with uh, flipping and what that exactly means. So, flipped classroom? Well, not quite like that, actually. What exactly makes a flipped classroom? It boils down to one core feature, and that's moving in-class activities outside of the classroom and moving at-home activities inside the classroom. To think of it this way, it's taking the lecture that would normally happen during a class and the homework that would normally happen outside a class and exchanging them. Basically doing the work that looks like homework while students are in class and then moving the lecture to outside of class. I also want to point out that in this graphic, this woman looks very stressed, and I think I know why. There are no words in all the books she's trying to study. The goals of flipping a class are many, but to boil them down to a few, it maximizes student-teacher interaction. It maximizes the amount of time that students and teachers can interact in a meaningful way. And I emphasize interaction rather than just content delivery, like a, a, a lecture would have. And there's more focus on the application of knowledge, rather than just the acquiring of knowledge. It also takes the shape of what a lot of people refer to as student-centered learning. And what I mean by that, and the easiest way to talk about that is to talk about something we're all more familiar with, and that is a teacher-centered learning class. In a teacher-centered learning environment, Hi, sorry to interrupt, but I thought this would be a great opportunity to talk about a device I sometimes insert into my videos to make sure my students are paying attention and have actually watched it. Um, and it gives me a good check to see how many people have actually watched it. So at this point in the video, you just saw that image of the old professor with the mortar board and reading from lecture materials show up on screen. I'm gonna have that same image and graphic in my presentation at the conference. When you see that on screen, I want you to shout out in unison with everyone else in the room who's watched this video, Oh no, not Professor Muckety Muck! Can you do that for me? Perfect. Now back to the video. The teacher and the students have a one-directional method of learning. The teacher provides information and the students gather the information and leave class. And typically they'll go home and try to apply that knowledge in some way, sometimes not. But the basic premise of teacher-centered learning is a unidirectional form of learning. This is opposed to student-centered learning, which flips the direction. The student is now the center of the learning. The teacher acts as part of this interaction, but notice there's a network here where other students are also participating in the learning and acquisition of knowledge in a bi-directional system where everyone is a part of the learning process, not just the teacher providing information to the class. This is a perfect fit for a music theory uh, classroom. Um, and the most you know, basic example of this is that you can learn an analytical tool at home and then come to class and be actively applying that tool during class where the teacher is present and can provide you with immediate answers to questions. You can ask students in the class questions. So these are the basics for flipping a class and why someone might want to flip a class. Just to give you a little preview of the things we will be talking about in the full session, talk about common ways classes are flipped. One is like this, recording audio or video ahead of class. Doing homework in small groups in class. So instead of assigning the homework, take a class time to actually just do the assignment in class where the professor and classmates can be there to immediately help with questions. 
And you very simply, you can handle simple assessments online. So if there are easy to grade assessments, things that like a multiple choice type of test, things where you just need sort of a basic checker, check mark of how the learning process is going, you can move those outside of the class to free up class time for more active ways of learning. So these are just some of the basics. I hope to see you all at the actual session. Again, that session is on February 26th at 1.30. Hope to see you all there.